In this video, you're going to learn about intermittent fasting for thyroid patients. In more detail, here's what, what we can expect to cover. First, we'll talk about the studies that currently exist on intermittent fasting and hypothyroidism, the results of those studies and how they affect the TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, T3 and others. And also just as important as it is to acknowledge what we know, it's important to acknowledge what we don't know. And I'll put that right up front in this video. If you want to learn more about uh, videos about thyroid health, nutrition, exercise, click like and subscribe to my channel. Before we jump in, just a little bit about me. My name is Eeyore. I am the author of 13 books on exercise and nutrition, including four Amazon bestsellers. One of those is called the No BS Guide to Intermittent Fasting for Women. As well, I've been a personal trainer since 2006. Uh, I've trained other personal trainers in my methodology uh, by speaking at other personal training conferences uh, since 2013. And I've presented in over 400 uh, of Canada's largest corporations, including IBM, Bosch, American Express, University of Toronto, Investors Group, and others. So let's jump in. First of all, let's look at the limited research that we have that exists on intermittent fasting and hypothyroidism. We should acknowledge that it's not in... Um, the average person. It's actually in women undergoing Ramadan fasting. Ramadan is a Muslim holiday that happens at potentially different times of the year where people can't eat before, uh, uh, they, they can't eat between sunrise and sunset. They can eat before sunrise or they can eat after sunset, no matter where they are in the world. So that might mean an intermittent fasting window of a few hours, or it could be many hours, depending on where, um, where a person lives. For example, if Ramadan happens to fall in June when there are very, very long months, then the fasting window would be a very long window. Uh, it also depends on where somebody lives. Um, on the other hand, if somebody if Ramadan is happening in December, which is a very short, uh, when, when the days are very short, then they would have a narrower fasting window. So that's what we know about uh, intermittent fasting in Ramadan um, and hypothyroidism. Now, what I will say is that there is no careful manipulation of different uh, variables to understand how intermittent fasting affects hypothyroidism. This is purely observation. But let's look at the research that does this. Here is one study titled Impact of Ramadan Fasting on Thyroid Status and Quality of Life in Patients with Primary Hypothyroidism. What does that mean? What is primary hypothyroidism? Primary hypothyroidism means they are lacking thyroid hormone. In other words, this is not Hashimoto's thyroiditis where the immune system is attacking the thyroid. This is primary hypothyroidism. And so in this study, 64 people with hypothyroidism were studied and the results were this. Their TSH levels pre-Ramadan were 2.37, after Ramadan, they were 4.69. Now, if you're wondering, what does this mean? Well, the ideal TSH is between 1.0 and 2.0. These were people who had pre-existing hypothyroidism, so their TSH was higher than ideal, and Ramadan made it worse. Here is another study titled, Ramadan Fasting and Changes in Thyroid Function in Hypothyroidism. And in this study, 481 hypothyroid patients were measured before and after Ramadan, and here were the results. Uh, before Ramadan, their TSH levels were 2.0, which is at the upper range of the ideal. And post-Ramadan, they were 2.9. Again, let me remind you that the ideal range for TSH is between 1.0 and 2.0. And so what's the bottom line from these two studies? And by the way, these are two of uh, the only two studies that exist at this time, at the time of this recording, on intermittent fasting for hypothyroidism. The bottom line is that likely intermittent fasting worsens thyroid function in people with uh, pre-existing thyroid problems. Now, this does not uh, affect um or this does not say anything about secondary hypothyroidism, like secondary to either conditions. This doesn't talk about Hashimoto's. This is just in primary hypothyroidism. So just as it is important to acknowledge what we know, it's also important to acknowledge what we don't know about intermittent fasting for hypothyroidism. So here's what still remains unknown. TSH is really a brain hormone. It's not a thyroid hormone, but it's a brain hormone that goes to the thyroid. The real thyroid hormone is called T3, or triiodothyronine. And within T3, it's divided into, into total T3 and free T3. It's actually free T3 
that is the most important hormone when it comes to thyroid function. That hormone was not studied in this research. Ad additionally, what was not studied was thyroid symptoms. Symptoms like cold hands and feet when other people around you are comfortable, constipation, low energy levels, thinning of the outer third of your eyebrow. So these symptoms weren't studied, purely TSH levels were studied. Also, what wasn't studied was the difference between men and women. Maybe it affects them differently. And a lot of other things weren't studied. Again, this is just for primary hypothyroidism as opposed to other factors like secondary uh, hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And many, many other factors were not studied. So whenever you see experts, gurus, or YouTubers talking about that they know how intermittent fasting affects the thyroid, the truth is at the present time, there is no research uh, beyond these couple of studies to, to back that up. Maybe at some point in the future, there will be additional research, but as it stands at the present time, there, there, there isn't. Um, if you uh, want to dive deeper into different uh, effects on thyroid health, I have a special video about uh, coffee for thyroid health, uh, for, for thyroid patients. Does it help or hurt? If you want, check out that video that's on your screen right now, and it's also found in the description below.